Welcome back to Chapter 7. This is our first example with springs, although it will not be our last example with springs. And we want to approach this problem the way that we have all of our other problems in this chapter. We start by drawing a picture. So there's a mass that has been already pushed into a spring when we first view it. And our goal is to find the maximum height here. Now, as we read through the problem, we should probably keep track of all these different numbers we're given. So the first number that we're given is 100 grams. That is the mass of the block here, 100 grams. And we need to train ourselves to turn this into our standard unit of mass, which is kilograms. And we get 0 0.1 kilograms. It's pushed down 8 centimeters. So that 8 centimeters is the x or um, delta x, the change in length of the spring before we um, hit the mass or pushed it into the spring and after. So that change in length is 8 centimeters. And again, we need to make sure that we're constantly thinking about what our standard units are we need this length to be in meters, and so we get 0 0.08 meters. And we're given the spring constant labeled as a K for us. That K is the spring constant, and it is used in the potential energy of a spring term. And then we're told that the mass is released. So if we go back to our picture, we know that we have trained ourselves to draw the before and after in very clearly for ourselves. So before and after labeled. And there's a couple of things that we want to make sure we recognize as additional information given to us in this problem. In the before situation, we have already pushed the spring down. We're holding it in place, and when we let go is when the problem starts. So in this situation, nothing is moving, so the initial velocity is zero because we are holding it into the spring. We are waiting to let go. It is really important for us to recognize this because a lot of students get this misconception that the... Um, block is moving at the start of the problem. In the same way that when you are waiting at a stop sign or a traffic light, you are about to accelerate forward, but you are not yet moving, it's the same situation here. There is no initial velocity given to us, and we are not asking for an initial velocity, and so we need to recognize that it's not a trick. It truly is a zero value because we are holding that mass in place. In the after situation, we have information about that um, velocity when we ask about specifically the maximum height. We know from chapter 2 and 3 that that means that the final velocity, at least in the y direction, and because this is only going up and down, that's the overall final velocity, that has to equal zero at the maximum height, because if it were still moving, it would be moving further up. So it pauses briefly at the top of its um, path. Okay, so with all that in mind, we can now ask ourselves all of these yes or no questions that we've started to see, and we've got one more to add to it, but we have seen how this process works and should hopefully be starting to feel very comfortable with it. So the kinetic energy term, we ask ourselves, are we moving? This was a question that uh, this is the first time we're asking it for a spring that's been pushed in. So it may have been somewhat unclear to you that we are not moving at the start. And if it was something you weren't sure about, you should make a note to yourself in your notebook, all capital letters highlighted, that that will be something you'll want to double check in spring problems if you continue to struggle with the idea that we aren't yet moving when we're pushed into that spring. At the end of the problem, we are definitely not moving because that's the very definition of maximum height in our situations that we've been seeing so far this semester. The potential energy from gravity. The question that we ask ourselves is, are we higher? 
At the beginning of the problem, we're down here near the ground. So the answer is no, we are not higher. And at the end of the problem, we are way up in the air. And we are, in fact, up in the air by a height h. And so we do have that mgh term. And height is what we're looking for here. That's our unknown. And then our new term that we are adding, although I have tried to put it into um, several of the examples with some zeros here, is the potential energy of a spring. And that term would get a yes or a no if we are in contact with a spring. It's right here in the before picture, so we would write 1 half kx squared. That is the potential energy of a spring term from our slides and it would be on a um, equation sheet when we need it. And when we're way up here in the air, there is no spring, and so we say no to that one. All right, as always, underneath the before and after, we ask about the work term. We are looking for a force that we have not yet dealt with, a push or a pull. If we think about all of the forces that act on this particular mass, the spring force is definitely there, but that's what the potential energy of the spring term accounts for. And gravity as a force is definitely there, but that's what the potential energy from gravity um, is accounting for. And although there is a surface of some kind that we're in contact with, for the problem itself, we're dealing with when it leaves that surface to the top. And so that normal force is not acting over a long distance. So there is no other um, force that could be giving us a work added term. As with all of the examples that we've seen, the equation that we use, we should write it down so that we really do get that muscle memory of how all of these problems look. Energy before, plus work added equals energy after. That should be something that, because we write it down every time, and you should be writing it down every time, it helps us link the similarities to all of these various problems that we are um, using this process with. All right, so the energy before is 0 plus 0 plus 1 half kx squared. The work term, because we said no, we'll say zero. And then the energy after term, we have zero plus mgh plus zero. As I've said before, and I just want to reiterate it here, the reason I put in all of these zeros is to help remind us where all of this is coming from. It's coming from our table. And it helps be this indicator to us that we should always be asking ourselves every one of these yes or no questions. All right, so we put in the numbers that we have from before. We changed all of the units to be the correct standard units. So most of our work is already finished for us. On the left, we'll have numbers we can just plug into the calculator. On the right, we have some of that as well. 0.1 times 9.8 times the height we're looking for. And so we will plug the left side into our calculator. We get 1.6 is equal to 0 0.98 times the height. So we can divide both sides by 0 0.98. And we will get our final answer of 1.63 meters is equal to the height. So a little less than six feet in the air, but we did push it quite far into a um, reasonably strong spring. So that is the end of the problem. You'll notice that the process we used is identical, even though there's a new term that we have seen for the first time here. We should always be applying this process to all of our chapter um, seven examples. So I will see you in the next example videos.